So, my name is Paolo. I'm a string KVM maintainer, uh, and uh, I will present more or less what happened in the last year since the last KVM forum in KVM kernel space. So, as of now, we have seven architectures with uh, in three support of KVM. These are ARM 32 and 64 bit, MIPS, uh, PowerPC, X86, and 390. One is dead, but it's still there. We don't know how long it will be there, but it's still there, and that's IA64. And uh, also there are two other architectures with out of three support for KVM. I hope they will be contributed soon, but they aren't there yet, and that's Tilera. Uh, Tilera actually has the guest support in three, only the KVM parts themselves are out. And the uh, hardware support for, um, for virtualization on MIPS is also not yet in three, but patches were posted, and I guess we will have a talk on KVM on MIPS. Maybe they will give us an update on that. There are, as you probably know, KVM is just the kernel side and relies on the user space component to provide uh, in the whole uh, virtual machine environment devices and uh, storage and networking and all that. And the big problem with IA64 is actually that besides the architecture itself not being in great health, it, do, it doesn't even have support in user space. Every other architecture now is supported in QEMU. Last year we were missing MIPS, this year we also got MIPS supporting QEMU. And uh, there is also, as you probably know, the KVM tool, also known as Linux KVM, also known as L NLKT or whatever. And that supports a good deal of architectures, basically everything except the 390. Uh, since last year, there were six kernel releases, more than 1,000 commits to KVM from about 35 different uh, corporate contributors. Usually we have uh, about 170 commits per release. Sometimes the PPC and S390 guys go berserk, send patches, and we get up to 240 as in the 317 release. Most of the commits, interestingly, are still for it x86. PPC, S390, and ARM are not that far behind, though. MIPS has still less momentum going on, but still has, it's mostly stable and until they introduce the hardware virtualization support. And also there's a good deal of patches for uh, the generic parts of KVM and they come from everybody, from x86 people, from PPC people, from S390, from ARM. Regarding the companies that contribute to KVM, of course Red Hat is employing the lead maintainer, <laughs> and we also do a bunch of work on x86. Also, very unexpectedly, IBM does PPC and S390 work, while ARM does ARM work. <laughs> uh, other hardware vendors like Freescale and Imagination work on their respective architectures. SUSE helps out both in KVM and QEMU with PowerPC and S390. Of course, Intel does hardware enablement for uh, new processors who already have support from, for some Skylake features, and those will be out in 2015 or even later. And also, Intel has done a good job on, also on uh, nested virtualization for x86. And honorable, honorable mentions for Fujitsu, Google, Huawei, Siemens for bug reports, uh, patches, uh, security work, whatever. IBM is actually leading the rankings by in number of commits by employer, mostly again thanks to the PPC and S39 guys bombarding with patches. <laughs> and there's a nice chart up there. In one interesting uh, uh, item is Technion, that's a university in Israel. They've been doing uh, fuzzing work 
and uh, actually one single person actually sent 53 x86 patches fixing various weird bugs. So we had a lot of features in the last year. Uh, VFIO integration for x86 means that the old style PCI device assignment is now completely unnecessary. The last missing bits that were KVM specific now <coughs> have been integrated into VFIO as well. Uh, Andean fun in both PPC and ARM. Hardware enablement uh, for x86, PowerPC, Power8, uh, map support for gas security. MPX is also a bounce checking feature that is actually not in any silicon that you can buy, but we already support it in KVM. Gas debugging support. Uh, you can see that a lot of features actually are being added to the newest architectures. Uh, ARM has transparent huge pages and S390s is moving towards that. MIPS got QMU support and some nice improvements to the interface between uh, KVM and the user space. Nested virtualization is, has gotten some momentum in the last year. People are actually using nested virtualization and they are not reporting that many bugs, which is kind of surprising. But we still have a lot of work to do. Testing with nested virtualization is hard because the test matrix becomes the square of what you had before. And uh, there's a lot of work to do again, migration support, optimization, and there will be a talk, I think, tomorrow about nested virtualization. And so also another interesting thing is support for uh, hosting hypervisors other than KVM. Uh, J allows, of course, works because that's uh, where Jan and Siemens contributed the, their own work to KVM. Uh, VMware is said to work, but uh, I have never tried. Hyper-V, I'm not even sure if anyone ever tried it, but if it doesn't work, we can fix bugs and see and make KVM nested virtualization better. We had nice security work, both by actually look, staring at the code and finding holes, thanks to Google, and Andy will talk about that probably uh, right after me. As I said before, uh, Technion University in Israel has, is doing a lot of fuzzing and comparing against bare metal behavior. And this was only for x 6 so other architectures probably should get into the habit of doing more uh, fuzzing work. All the bugs that we found, or many of the bugs that we found in x 6 have unit tests for them. <coughs> Uh, so in the last year, we had 160 commits to KVM unit tests. So for every six commits, seven commits on KVM, we have one test, which is not that bad. There's also initial work on uh, porting KVM unit tests to ARM. And we also have other tools than unit tests for integration testing. There is VIRT test, formerly known as AutoTest. Intel is doing periodic manual integration testing and providing bisection results when they have bugs. And of course, as members of the kernel community, we enjoy support from the rest of the community through the Linux Next, <coughs> the Linux Next tree and continuous build servers uh, that are around the world. So performance, KVM is faring pretty well. These are the top four results for uh, SpecVirt and three of them, and the three of them are all on x86 KVM. There is still no power KVM result, maybe next year. Usually they are run on uh, RHEL 6 for stability, but we also have a pretty good uh, RHEL 7 result in there. Another interesting result is this one, so it's same hardware comparison. This is the only SpecVirt result for VMware ESX. 
you can probably see why. And uh, another interesting point here is that the hypervisor here is uh, uh, KVM, of course, but not on top of RHEL. In this case, the host is running a Huawei Fusion Sphere. It's also somewhat RHEL based, but they have their own KVM kernel module, something like that. And the reason I say it's interesting is because Fusion Sphere actually started as a Zen product and uh, the only spec word result they have is for KVM. That might also say something, I don't know. <coughs> so that's it for this first small presentation. Have a great time here at KVM Forum and Andy is going to present on security hardening of KVM. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.